Hey YouTube, Facebook, and whatnot. This is Blade Junkie. And, um, last posts that I've made were about an epic vehicle which was all wheel drive, so to speak. Um, previously it was a 4x4, I was calling it the epic 4x4. Um, if you watched the most recent video, um, you would know that I was planning to make it into a 6x6 but I was waiting for a package from Lego. I got that package and uh, now I can start showing you what it looks like completed. So, um, I thought, why don't I do that? So, um, I've got the vehicle here and a few other things too that I wanted to show you. Um, so first of all, um, I would like to show you why I am delayed in my videos lately. So I'm going to show you exactly why I am delayed in my videos. And that's because in my in one of my packages I got parts for another thing that I'm going to start work on soon. So I would like to show you exactly what it is. So give me a minute here to plug all of my stuff in to show you what it is so far. Then I will do that. Um, Let's see. That doesn't work particularly well. Uh, right. Well, then I guess it'll go with this one. So, alright, uh, let me just move that over there so you can kind of see it. Um, so this is not really something that's particularly related to the, to the video that I am intending to show you, which I will show you quite soon, I assure you that. Um, alright, so this is what I got here. Uh, you probably can't see it very well, and I know that because I'm looking at the screen and I can't see it very well. So anyway, um, this is what I've got so far of my next creation. And I don't actually know what it is for sure yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be another trial vehicle. Um, so let's see if I can show you. Alright. So... Uh, this battery seems to be dying, but nevertheless, I can show you what it does. Alright. Oh, goodness. I really can't tell you how little this does with this nearly dead battery, but... There is the drive. And I believe one of these is supposed to be the steering. Um, so this is just, uh, let's see. Alright, there it is. So that's the steering. Um, this is the drive, and then this is the gear shifter, and it's based on uh, Serial, Serial's design, uh, you can find it at Serial.pl, um, probably not doing it much justice, but it's a two-speed gearbox, um, I'm sorry that this is such a crappy thing here because of this dead battery, so I guess I'll quit wasting your time with it, but anyway, uh, the idea is that this motor here uses a rack and pinion system to slide forward and backward. So the motor itself moves rather than everything else moving. So rather than having to have multiple axles, you can have a total of three axles that drive the entire thing. And it's all based on transfer gears. So that's that, I guess. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, I actually don't know what I want to do with this, so I'll just go there. Uh, excuse me. And this is the controller, and I was just using it for that demo because I don't have any more of them, but this is the controller for the Epic 6x6, which was once the Epic 4x4. Now it's color-coded, so this is the accessory button, and it's red because my accessories are generally red, as seen here. So this is, this is the upgraded shovel from the Epic 4x4. Uh, much better detail, I think. Um, it's got those kind of hose things on the back, still just as robust. It's got a few extra little things for the appearance, like this little black lining thing around it. I don't exactly know why that would be there, but again, just scale appearance. Um, I don't know if I've said scale appearance yet, so I guess maybe it's not again. But anyway, that's the shovel. Um, so you've probably seen it, but if you haven't, then go watch the other videos, but I'll just show you. It's a gigantic gear inside, and it's a worm gear thing. So when you turn this, it'll raise and lower it. 
but as of now it's not working because it's not hooked up to the truck so it's just rotating this part of it because I'm holding the other part of it but anyway when you turn that worm gear activates some stuff so that's cool um, and yeah I think I want I want a little more light here but I don't know how exactly to get it so uh, let's see if this thing works on off on on well that's how you do it okay well, so this is supposed to be like a remote control thing. Where's the button? Off. Okay, I don't know how it works because I didn't really set it up. But anyway, um, so this is really not providing as much light as I hoped it would. So that's unfortunate, but uh, I guess I can move it around a bit. Alright. I don't know why. It just seems dim in here. So. Oh, there's no bulb in this one. That explains things. Well, that sucks, but whatever. Um, okay. There we go. A little better light. Um, so, if I were to make myself comfortable, which is what I'm doing. Alright, now. Um, and I said color-coded, so accessories are red. Winch is blue. Let me make sure it's turned off before I go fudging around with it. Anyway, winch is blue. Up, down, winch. Shovel up, shovel down. Um, steering of course is this one so you know um, turn left turn right so I guess turn left turn right and drive is this control so left right and all that good stuff like left right forward backward winch in winch out accessory up or closed accessory down or open and you'll see why I'm saying that in a minute um, so yeah these are uh, non proportional IR controllers for LEGO power functions so yeah uh, you can see that this has changed because I needed to use the uh, the gear that I had been using here which had been more like that um, for that gearbox so the gearbox sucks right now though because it's the battery that I was using there was dead because I did it wasn't the battery box I had been using it was just one that I grabbed just randomly you can see in the mirror the vehicle start by showing you the claw. This is the other accessory and unfortunately it's not red but that's fine with me. But anyway, does that. Shock absorbers here allow you to continue turning it and uh, the pressure on the object will increase but the, deer, the gears rather whoa, won't get damaged. Um, so that's cool. Um, so that connects to the front of the vehicle just as it did. Again, Watch Epic 4x4, please. Excuse me for, you know. Um, anyway. Hi, y'all. Heave. I must say this is large, but again, it has become larger. So I don't know if I told you the weight in the first video, but it was somewhere around like four pounds or something, maybe four or six, somewhere between there, I think. Um, so you can see I've added some detail stuff to it, like these things and these little yellow deals here and these yellow things came from really early Lego aqua sets or submarine kind of sets um, these shiny things you can find them more often but those came from a set that I got when I was about 8 or 12 years old somewhere in that range I think um, you can see it's got Unimog tires now so that's awesome and uh, I really like the Unimog tires they're very neat um, and they prevent from severe bowing because of those high side walls, so they're a nice 90 degree angle. They're they're not prone to doing what the bubble tires do, which would be um, to like flex outwards, so that you'll have both of them doing stuff like I can't really show you this, but you know I guess it would be like uh, that stuff like that, where you'd be driving along and then they, over time they do this, so that would suck. That's bad. So you can see detailing, extra bulb kind of things here, not actual bulbs, just for appearance. Winch blue as I said accessories are red so they plug into here this little port the winch is blue so its control is blue on the controller uh, which is very cool um, so yeah high side wall unimog tires because my package was delivered as well as the uh, inner rims for them the rims I guess whatever you want to call them inner rims inner wheels whatever you want to call them uh, uh, this little um, visor here is new. I added that on. You can see on top the spares right here. The 
more obvious spare is this one here, which is held down by four chains um, from older sets. Again, I don't know what sets exactly, but from a long time ago. Um, warning lights here and here and here and here. Um, indicator lights, again, not functioning in there, one there. Um, so yeah, and I chose these things here, these cage kind of things, just because they look really neat. They don't look as cool from the side as they do from the front, but they do look neat. Um, so very robust, of course. Um, yeah, um, watch the other videos if you haven't. Um, Epic 4x4, and let me see if I can figure out the name of the other. It's Le Epic LEGO Technic 4x4 and Extremely Efficient LEGO 4x4 are the videos I suggest you watch. Um, so yeah, um, and for those of you that didn't know, this is a mock, which I believe stands for My Own Creation. And so, uh, it is my own creation. It cannot be purchased in stores or anything. It's all custom, built from the ground up, no instructions, based on knowledge and concepts within my own brain, and, uh, some concepts, uh, a, a good few of them, actually, were taken from fellow builders, such as Serial, ZBLJ, I don't actually know his name, um, Jurgen Kershup, sorry if I butchered that, I don't know, uh, Rhodes Lover, um, uh, yeah, just a lot of people, really, um, have really great concepts, but I think Serial probably helped me the most, um, and Trial Truck Tips, which I mentioned in Epic 4x4 video, um, by ZBLJ also helped me a lot, so thank you guys for that. Got some hairs and stuff on there, various dirt from driving. Alright, um, anyway, um, you can see these spares, as I said, one held on by chains held inside of a little roof rack thing. The other one. If I move the camera all the way over here, see this one here? It's not really held on quite as securely, but it is held on reasonably well, so you just pop it off like that. There it is, just held on by an axle and this little black thing, which is mounted to the, uh, the spare gas tank, um, which is common for large vehicles like these to have an extra gas tank. It's also common for uh, tanks to have a gas tank on the back. You'll see something more like that, like a large gas can. It's made with an old Lego City, not really old, I guess. It's a Lego City steamroller kind of thing. And, um, and uh, the gray portion of turntables, which would usually be black and gray. So I took the black part off. I just snapped it off and used the gray portion, but I can snap them back on, of course. Um, chain here, just for that kind of neat effect kind of cool look. Uh, still using the 8878 battery pack with this little clicker thingy here that you can, you know, use to, it'll push the button, but yeah. Uh, two switches in the cab, one for the headlights, as you can see there. There's only one bulb because I only have one set of the headlight things. This one back here activates, as you can hear, this noise. And if you've seen the other videos, you will recognize this, of course. Yeah. There we go. You can take this little thing off and exposes a miniature, not really miniature, it's a standard Lego scale engine, but it's a V8. I can't really get a very good view on it, but anyway, that's what that is. You can kind of see the motor in there. If you care to see the internal functions of it, then uh, go watch the other videos, like I said. They're going to look like they're painfully long, but you can skip through them if you feel like it. Um, in fact, I'd suggest it, suggest, golly, I can't speak, suggest it, because I know I'm incredibly boring, um, yeah, so, see this arc cage, for those of you that have seen the other videos, it's got these nice kind of detailed things here on the side that kind of go down these ascending looking things, um, exhaust right here, also pretty neat, um, not bad, pretty cool, uh, antenna here, so that's, that's neat too, of course. Um, the gas tank has a hose, like a nozzle thing, and, uh, little, whatever, I don't know what you'd call it, a valve, and, uh, yeah, so you could transfer fuel between vehicles or siphon between tanks and whatnot. Other than that, it's pretty much the same, you know, with the warning lights and all that. Um, brake lights, right here, or brake light, um, warning light, right here, um, Indicator here and here again not functioning. And I'll turn that engine off. 
the fake engine. Flip the switch. And no more noise of engine. On. Off. The lights, of course, make no sound. Um, obviously. So, um, yeah. That's quite awesome. So, let's see. Alright. Now, this is where things are going to get really cool. I think. Um, move my camera for a moment over to here so that I can put stuff back to the desired locations, such as the spare, which I would prefer to put back just because I can, and I will, of course. Um, now, come on, there we go. Alright, um, as I said, if you care to see internal functions of all the stuff that was already on there, check. Uh, check my channel, uh, Epic 4x4 and um, Extremely Efficient LEGO 4x4. Or Epic LEGO Technic 4x4 and Extremely Efficient LEGO 4x4. Um, to see the functions of stuff. So that's cool, um, if you care for that. Now, move it over to the bed here where I've got more room to show you how it works. With the blanket out of the way. Voila. Six wheels now. It's actually got a total of eight, including the two spares here. Um, but, yeah, three on each side. Six-wheel drive. Um, triple axle. Um, six by six. Two-wheel steering. Um, um, dual rear axles, because it looks cool. Um, it's not quite the same conceptual appearance that some realistic modern uh, trucks have, which would be to have dual front and four-wheel steering and uh, single rear axle with no steering or, you know, stuff along those lines. So, um, but still, cool. Um, nonetheless, I think it just looks a little more standard, which is neat, and it gives you a little bit of a better drive, uh, drive power in the back. Which reminds me, looking at the back, of course, you can see pretty awesome, kind of conceptual, curvy-looking bumper, which is pretty neat. I don't know why I like the look of that. It's just, you know, on a, on a vehicle that's designed to be so rigid, you expect to see all rigid stuff, but I'm not those... I'm not the sort that would uh, really care much for that, because, you know what, let's face it, it looks cool, that's the point. So, yeah, you can take this back part off, because... What will happen if you're driving is you'll get leaves and stuff stuck up in here, and then if they get stuck or mud or really anything, uh, then you'll have trouble with stuff. So uh, indicator, brake, brake, indicator. Um, let me pull these off now. So you can take those off for when you're driving so it doesn't block your stuff. Um, it's not as much of a problem up here, really, but um, yeah. So anyway, um, brake lights, brake lights, indicator, indicator, brake, brake, indicator, indicator, uh, backup lights, reverse lights, whatever you want to call them, and um, that's cool. And if you haven't watched the other videos, I'll just tell you now that each of these, uh, each of these rear wheels, each of these four rear wheels, um, are actually like so. There, there are a total of uh, eight wheels in, in, or eight tires in each of these wheels. So um, that's pretty cool. So you know. It's it's really amazing. I I don't know exactly how to go about explaining it. It's just brilliant. But you know, um, it's just cool. So um, grand total of thirty six wheel or thirty six tires in this thing. Um, because the there's the main tire in this and seven tires inside of it. Uh, that was an idea from ZBLJ. So I would like to thank him yet again for that. And so yeah. So that's cool. So that follows for all four wheels in the back. Um, and then the four Unimog tires in the front are the are the high side walls, so they are nice and robust, and they don't have the tendency to lose grip on uh, on their rims, which originally these did, which you would recognize if you saw the uh, Extremely Efficient 4x4 video. Um, so this is cool. Kind of the underbody of it, very strong, more of the uh, skid plate sort of pan thing under it. Again, kind of awesome, um, in my opinion. And let's see here. Um, so yeah, this arc shape, again, natural, cool. 
check out all the other videos. They're going to say they're long because they are, but you don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't care to. Um, I can take these off, actually. I don't know if I will. I guess I'll take this one off because it's not terribly hard to do. Um, let me just get this out of the way. Come on now. It won't, oh, right. It's strapped in, in a different weird location. All right. We're not really strapped, I guess, but, you know, it's in there, mounted strangely. So you pull those up. See, I'm holding the camera, so this is good. This is crazy hard. Because I don't usually do that. I usually have a little uh, Lego contraption that's intended to hold the camera and stuff like that. So I'll do this with two hands here if I can. Come on. It's, like I said, robust. So this is the rear thing, whatever, I don't know, I don't know what you want to call that, but anyway, um, it's cool, um, dang it, alright, well, there's that thing, so, put that back on there, now, oh, yeah. this third axle, same drive concept as all the others, um, no rear port for, uh, an extra axle, because I'm not gonna have a trailer for this, after all, um, which for some of you might be a letdown because I told you that there would be a larger trailer in the extremely efficient 4 rifle video, but there's not going to be. So anyway, you can see there are actual shock absorbers in here, and that's to allow it to do that. Very cool. It's on a turntable, so it can do this. And uh, of course, second axle is also still on its own separate turntable, so, you know, lots of movement there. Um, heavy duty, uh... Where is it? There it is. Heavy duty universal join here because they're strong. Again, if you haven't known, uh, check out the other videos, but the only universal joints I will ever use in uh, a heavy duty, like an off-road vehicle, will most likely be XLs, or I guess they're not XLs, but they, they are very large and very robust. Um, this here, second axle um, fender kind of thing, also removable, of course, in order to access everything inside of it. Very large. Give me a minute to move it there. Then this is going to be complex here because this is very bulky. Okay. <clears throat> oh man, I'm flying all kinds of parts, throwing them really. I can't talk, and I don't know why. It's probably because it's spring break right now, and unlike other people, I'm not partying. I'm building Legos because I'm a nerd like that. Because I got that nerd rage. That has nothing to do with it. But actually, I, I do appreciate the songs compiled and uh, created by your favorite Martian. Quite awesome, epic, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's the gears. As you can see there. Um, maybe not, but anyway, whatever. If you haven't seen them, check out the other videos. So, alright. see if I can manage to pop this all into place. Here we go. And finally, come on now. There we are. And these back in place. Yeah, as I said, robust because that's how I build. When I build Legos, I don't build them to be acceptable. I build them to be better than acceptable. And actually, at Dark Raven's house the other day, um, I was working on this, and um, I had it. Uh, he he has a, a like a double bed kind of thing with the bed on top and uh, a desk underneath, and so I had it hoisted, hoisted itself up um, by the winch, which I will show you again in a minute, probably. Um, I had it pull itself from, I had it sitting on the ground, I pulled out the entire winch, and then I hooked it up to this the uh, top rung of this bed thing, and I had it pull itself up, and uh, when it hit the top, the winch kept pulling, because I lost signal on my IR receivers, because IRs are easily blocked, you have to have like direct range with it. So I lost my signal, and it kept pulling. So the winch is strong enough to break the string. So it pulled itself up to the point where the winch was touching the plastic of the, uh, the uh, grill in the front, and it broke the string. And the entire vehicle fell all the way you know, it, it was like a good six, not six foot, like a four foot drop, which is pretty, pretty big drop to go, you know, not tumbling to literally fall. So it did. 
it fell that entire distance, and it survived, which is quite awesome. So, um, and that's that's cool because if uh, if I hadn't built it in such a robust way, you know, with so many unusual and robust methods, then it would most likely be broken. And I didn't actually break any pieces when it fell. Nothing broke. Not a single part broke. Nothing. Not the vehicle. Nothing. It was. It was fine. The only thing that I had to fix was the was the string inside of the uh, the winch because it kept reeling it in. So I had to pull it back out through the port and then weave it through the wheels again. Uh, the wheels at the front. Here you can see them kind of. Um, no, you can't really, but. You know this and this, so it, it that's I just had to thread it back through there. So that was that was a big project because I had to kind of disassemble it, but it really wasn't that bad. Um, anyway, so that was cool um, that it worked. So that's why I build things so robustly, um, or I build them to be robust. I really don't know the proper phrasing for that. I guess it's not a phrase I would commonly use. But anyway, um, snapping these back on here and that as well. Alright, so that's the rear axle, the third axle at least, um, which I would take off this wheel to show you all the epic features, but I can't because the wheels are so incredibly well held on there, um, just with the Lego parts, so, you know, awesome. Again, a little too robust for its own good, but nevertheless, incredible. Um, you know, actually, there's an easy way to attach this, and that would be to disconnect a few things. Now this is actually where things get really, really weird. So I actually might not end up doing that. But um, let's see if I can manage to reassemble this. See, now this is the problem with me making videos because I try to do it as one continuous shot, which as most people would know, doesn't look good. So, you know, it's, I'm no professional, so I don't need a I don't need a separated shot for all my stuff, because I'm just not like that. So anyway, um, yeah, that's cool. So yeah, this is it. Um, third axle there, suspension still works. You can see this little yellow thing kind of gets uh, pulled under this thing, or this, it really doesn't get pulled under, it just skims over it, you know, whatever you want to call that. Um, so let me show you what these are for, because these are actually quite cool. They would usually be used for the purpose of... I'm going to float you around some craziness. This camera here is crazy. Come on. Alright, you know what? That'll do. Anyway, um, you know what? I actually don't need to do that. I can just unclick this right here. So, I'll do that. I'll do exactly that. Now, let's see if I actually can do it now that I've said that I can. I probably can't. Oh, great. Nope, probably not. There we go. Nope. Now it just snapped itself back in again. There we go. Alright, now, these are commonly used, as I said, in uh, bulldozers or small Technic sets or small city sets and whatnot as well. So, here it is. Nice, kind of lengthy chain. Um, so, I what I've done here, which I find quite incredibly revolutionary, even though it probably isn't, is turn it inside out. And as I said, I can't hold the camera and do this at the same time because I usually have a Lego contraption that holds it, but I needed the parts to uh, build all my other stuff. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that just inverted like that. So that's the smallest your arc's going to get right there for the most part. Um, now, I'll just show you, for example, with this here, the spare. And you might or might not understand what this is before I show you and tell you what it is but put it on there and fits quite nicely really with that number of uh, pieces on there treads and whatever so yeah that that would that only works with the front wheels because the back wheels these bubble wheels have really good traction so if I'm on snow or anything it's not a problem um, with these anyway, whereas these front ones, they don't have as deep a thread on them, so the tread pattern's not quite as good. So, on snow, I put these little things on here so that I can get a really good pattern on there, a really, really good grip. So these will dig into the snow really well, and uh, 
they hold a really great grip, as I've said before. Um, so that's why I do that. And it works quite incredibly well. So I can't really sh put them on and show you. And I'm sorry I keep throwing the camera around and all this, but, you know, uh, it's just what I do. So anyway, um, as I said, um, fits quite nicely on there. You can probably fit more of them, but I didn't have enough chain to fit two of them uh, side by side on one. But you could do that. You certainly could if you wanted to. But as I said, I don't have enough chain to do that, or tread, rather. So I wasn't able to do that. Um, so I guess I've showed you all the features for the most part, except for the engine and the accessory. Um, so yeah. All right, let me see here. Um, so yeah, antenna, awesome little thing. Um, really sweet, gnarly looking conceptual rear grill bumper thing. Uh, bumper guard? What would you call that exactly? I'm trying to remember it, but I can't. I can't remember it off the top of my head. So, oh well. Let's see. Come on. Pull your way through here. There we go. So, to put this whole thing back together appropriately, got to pull this thing off. And then you just pull this over here. Like this. And snap it back in. And then line up the axles to fit in their zones there and then just click it back in place and then that holds it in there nicely and so there are only two of these because there are only two front wheels obviously so um, and that and the Unimog tires are the only ones that really lose grip on snow so uh, there's no snow outside right now there was when I had been testing this whole concept for the for the snow the snow chains and it worked so quite awesome Oh man, it's big. Probably doesn't look quite right to you guys, but it looks pretty awesome to me. So, you know, pretty awesome. Huge, huge vehicle. Now, if I turn it around here, and I get this shovel, I can show you how it's intended to be put on. So, gotta start by pulling this little center thing up the uh, center, like the windshield splitter, which would generally be used on a larger truck for the purpose of allowing more uh, more uh, windshield space with less actual solid windshield so that you have a better solid look thing. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, so I'm sorry if they're screwing this up <clears throat> so horribly. Alright, now, this is going to be horrible, but there we go. Now, because it's on the bed and it weighs so much, it's sinking, so I can't actually show you very well what the shovel looks like. So, I have to hold it up to do that. So, as I said, the red control represents the red accessory. So, lower accessory, lift accessory. Lower, lift, lift, lower, lift, lower. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, but it does actually work as a shovel. But as I said, there isn't enough room inside of this for motors to uh, turn it like side to side or to uh, do anything more like that. So that's about as far as the functions go for that shovel, which is fine because it doesn't need a lot of functions. So you just pull that little gray pin and snap it off like that. Very robust, gnarly looking hoses and all that good stuff. The other accessory, not actually red, so not quite what I was going for there, but it worked well enough. Sideways, whoops. Alright, whatever. Anyway, this one's far smaller uh, in comparison, so, you know, but it works reasonably well, I think. Um, so you just push it in, push the pin down, and then you move this little center the windshield splitter down like that and you probably can't see the claw very well like that because of the fact that it blends so well with the color which isn't very good because it makes it hard to see so not quite as good but still cool um, so anyway there it is and then activate the closing feature and you can see those shock absorbers start to function there 
there. So you never have to worry about cracking your gears or anything. It just it'll grab the object and then it'll put more and more pressure on the object and then that makes it a better hold for the object. Like that. I don't remember whether or not this was a concept originally designed by someone else, but I did recall seeing a similar idea to this using shock absorbers to reduce the force on it on your gears um, and it worked quite nicely for them as well so I'm, I used it I didn't I, but I redesigned it I didn't use the exact thing I don't like doing that often I re I really don't do that ever actually um, but anyway so yeah that's that's what it looks like there <coughs> man Ugh. it's weird um, anyway uh, let me see if I can show you oh yeah the winch of course the winch is blue. Voila. Therefore, its control is blue. Voila. So, activate it. Goes down. Um, so this isn't actually a string that I was using when I was at Dark Raven RO2's house, and uh, and we were uh, working with the string. He gave me this string after the Lego string that I had broke because this string is a little bit stronger. So, but again, it's still just string. So, yeah, kind of limited. I would use something more like a metal wire, but I don't actually have any of that, and I think it would maybe shave some of the plastic off of my Lego parts, and I don't want that. So, that sucks, but... Uh, so, this, so the winch is only as strong as the string. The, well, the winch is a lot stronger than the string, but that means that the vehicle can only take the pressure of, of the winch in, in that immediate situation. So, that kind of that's kind of disappointing um, but this here holds it in place holds it against the body so that it's nicely out of the way Oop. a little bit of a collision problem there there we go now um, I don't want to pull that too tight because it can bust things up a little but anyway um, that's that that's the winch you can see it has almost no ride height on this bed because it's so dang heavy that it just pulls itself right down which stinks, I know. Oh, look at that, you can kind of see the bowing in there. How it's, uh, when you set it down, woof. See how that wheel is kind of splitting out there? Like separating a little? That will that won't happen often, but when it does, it sucks. Anyway, um, now, very slow, of course, as it was all along. Very, very slow. But, still, ultimately, a brilliant vehicle. And, as I said, the largest that I've ever made, therefore I'm very proud of it. Um, so, you know, very cool. Um, triple axle thing, I'm still really getting used to that kind of thing, because I didn't really ever have enough parts to make a triple axle. So, it really wasn't an option. Uh-oh, look how freaky that looks. I'm going to put this little thing back down there. There we go. Poor turning radius. That's because I had to custom build my portals to fit the large... Uh, universal joints. Um, so that was a little disappointing of a requirement, but nevertheless, it helped. So, here we go. Let's see if it can do this. That's about all the proof I need, but again, now it's pulling the, the sheets up into the uh, the rear bumper cage kind of thing. So, yeah, but you can see that it does have some pretty nice suspension action, um, considering there is no front suspension. But it's just, again, you know, such an incredibly massive vehicle that... You're, you're really limited by how powerful your motors are, and in my case, I'm a purist, so I don't like I don't like messing up with my motors, so I'm not going to pull one apart and put my own high-torque motor or brushless motor inside of it or anything like that. So, you know, I'm not going to do that because it really isn't that big of a deal to me um, to, to do that, and, and I'm just against people that do that. I mean, if you if you like doing that, that's, I guess, to each their own, but, you know, to each their own doesn't apply to this because it's a Lego, dude. It's just Lego, all right? Don't, don't screw it up. If you want to go build something that's powerful and strong, don't build it with Legos. I mean, you can build amazing things. 
out of Legos. But if you want to build something that's specifically designed to be strong, don't go with Legos. Legos are just a cool imagination tool. They're not really something you should ever use for seriously strong stuff. If you want it to be strong, then use metal. Like, get a freaking Meccano or a Rector set, you know? Don't, don't try to, don't, don't modify your stuff, you know? It's just, it's stupid to do that. Um... But, you know, again, like the rant at, my, at the end of the uh, one of my videos, I don't remember which one, I had some stupid rant that went on for a long time, um, you know, don't, don't think that Legos are a kid's toy, because you know what, Legos require a lot more skill than most people possess, believe me, I know, I know a lot of people that say Legos are built specifically for kids, and you know what, Let's face it, I'm kind of a kid. You know, nobody's perfect, so... See, this is the blanket getting caught in it again. Because that will still happen on the, on the front there, because of the uh, fenders, but... Still, um... The very, very slow turning, very, very low speed in general. Um, of course, with a proportional controller, it can go much, much slower than this. So, then it looks just strange. But, you know, move the camera back again so that you can see all this. But, yeah, it climbs reasonably well for its size. Um, I'm sure if I were the sort to compete in in uh, LEGO trial races and whatever you want to call them, uh, trial events, this would be a reasonable vehicle for that, you know, but... I don't want to bust up my Legos, so I made it robust. But again, robust can be a problem sometimes, so if you're going to build robust, be careful. Um, because you might you might end up breaking the harder to find pieces. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I apologize again for wasting all your time with this. I apologize for the fact that I spend so much of my videos talking and so little of them actually presenting stuff, but let's face it, that's who I am. Some people do that, some people don't. I'm not one of those people that can just make a little five minute video that shows you all the features. I'm the kind of person that has to explain it and plug various things like people, like Serial, ZBLJ, Rhodes Lover, um, you know, all those kind of people. Uh, Maj, M-A-H-J, I believe it is. Um, you know, there's a lot of cool people out there that I get concepts from, and then, you know, I just want to thank them all. So, again, I apologize for using all of your dang time on this video, but I would, again, of course, like to thank you for watching, and um, wish you good luck with your building, because that's what life is. It's about making stuff that's cool. As far as, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Um, it's, you know, some people wouldn't say that, but I'm not some people. So, you know. Um, again, this is the Epic 6x6. Six six, and the various accessories intended for the vehicle. So, you know. Thank you again for uh, for watching, and uh, yeah, this is uh, this is Play Junkie signing off. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe if you feel like it. Um, thanks again, it's Play Junkie signing off.